Hi all! As I promised in my last video, I'm taking you along with me to see some Tribeca art galleries. And as I also mentioned in my last video, a lot of these galleries are brand new to Tribeca. They've moved from the Lower East Side or Chelsea, and Grimm Gallery is no exception. They actually did move from the Lower East Side, and now they're in this gorgeous space. I am just obsessed with the wooden floors and the natural light. It's so good in here. And this is an exhibit of paintings by Caroline Walker. And Caroline paints women in their everyday habitats in order to tell a story of the different spaces that they inhabit. And the gallery describes these new paintings of walkers as being conceived as a reflection on community and how the anonymous people we encounter become characters in our own stories. Her subjects include a neighbor working in her garden, the local dry cleaner, and a pharmacist sales assistant all of whom are connected within a discrete area of the sprawling London metropolis. They say that Walker describes small movements of daily existence and encapsulates the corners of life, which are often overlooked, but nonetheless vital, written and erased from history over and over again. So Caroline actually lives and works in the UK, and this is her fourth solo exhibit with Grimm, which is super impressive. Next stop is Andrew Krebs Gallery, and I've been to Andrew Krebs Gallery before, but I've actually never had the privilege of seeing their basement that they've converted into an additional gallery space, so we'll check that out in a little bit. But this exhibit is titled 15 Painters and is a group show made up of, as you can guess, 15 artists. And all of the artists were born after 1980, and the theme of the exhibit is meant to showcase sort of how young and fresh talent approach painting in diverse ways. And this is an artist that I just love from this show. He's an Italian artist. I will link him below. He creates these just theatrical worlds within his works, but he does so with these really delicate layers and an almost monochrome palette so that you don't get too overwhelmed looking at them. And Megan Marin is another favorite over here. There's two works by her. She was born in Missouri and she paints objects that are known for being accompanied by a human in order to draw attention of their absence, like the bar painting or this painting, which I'm is this an electric chair? I'm not totally sure, but very, very interesting.
over here against the wall is another great work of this show by Sophie Reinhold and she was born in Germany and she applies marble powder to her surfaces so that they have this sort of otherworldly sheen to them in order to make her subject matter almost angelic. As promised, we are giving you a sneak peek of the basement space. This is just incredible. It literally doubles the size of the gallery and it's just so modern, so beautiful. Super excited to see how they utilize this space moving forward. I'm so pleased with all of the exhibits today. Honestly, they're, they're so, so good. Um, this is an exhibit at PPOW Gallery, and it features the works of two artists, Martin Wong and Aaron Gilbert. And I'm familiar with Aaron Gilbert's work. I've seen his stuff at Lyles and King Gallery before. He's a Brooklyn-based artist. But Martin's work was actually new to me. He is a um, Chinese-American painter who passed away in 1999. And the gallery states that the exhibit focuses on two artists whose practices amplify the societal pressures of both their private lives and the communities they inhabit. And their work chronicles a continuum of life within a city under siege. And what they're talking about here is that both artists have suffered through two pandemics. One we're all familiar with, we're still living in, of course, I'm talking about COVID. And the other pandemic is the AIDS, AIDS pandemic. And both artists provide a window into the realities of what it is and what it was to live in a time when these things were going on. And Wong is, is quoted as saying, everything I paint is within four blocks of where I live and the people are the people I know and see all the time. And Aaron Gilbert is also known for creating paintings that capture his family, his neighborhood, and his community.
When Aaron Gilbert was asked to describe his own connection with Martin Wong's work, he said that Wong created a new template for what he could ask and expect from figurative painting. I felt I had someone whose personal relationship to his work was genuine. He wasn't performing his world for another audience. He was capturing what he loved in the sincerest way and freezing it in that special perpetual moment the great painting seemed to live eternally in. His work invites us to enter his world and to inhibit it on its terms. I just love that so, so much. It's so beautiful. First of all, sorry the lights are flickering like this. I, I don't know why the camera picks up on gallery lights like that sometimes, but we are at Mikkel Bushin Gallery to see Jim Lee's exhibit titled The Peel Sessions. And the title is a reference to John Peel, who is the infamous BBC Radio 1 DJ that invited 2,000 artists to record three or four songs in live sessions that were later broadcasted on air. And in general, John Peel empowered artists to create rough and experimental works by giving them a platform. And Jim Lee's exhibit serves up paintings in the same flavor that are a little rough, a little gritty. He experiments with texture, playing with the boundaries of what constitutes a painting versus a sculpture. And I personally love the Kim Gordon reference. I definitely had to get a picture with that one. Next stop is the first show at the whole gallery's brand new second gallery space. Did I say galleries enough? <laughs> Their original gallery space uh, is in the East Village, and honestly, I can't think of a gallery more deserving of multiple locations. I love the whole so much. And this is an exhibit by Eric Shaw that features 10 paintings the artist created during the fall and the winter of the pandemic. His exhibit, I guess, last March got cut short when all the galleries had to close, so this was sort of their way of making it up to him. And I don't know about you all, but I've been loving seeing really colorful artworks during all of this. I feel like we all just need some color and positivity right now. I also love how The Hole has described these works in the press release. They've called it fresh exercise for your eyeballs, and they're not wrong. <laughs> in general, uh, Shaw draws inspiration for his shapes from street signs, logos, biological diagrams, and even his grandmother's paintings, which I think is really sweet. Another nice touch of the exhibit, which I love when exhibits do this in general, is that there's a QR code that you can scan 
when you enter the exhibit and you can hear a mix of all of the music that he listens to when he's in the studio. So it just adds a little extra something something to the, uh, the uh, environment. The last stop of the day is Lomex Gallery. It's another transplant gallery from the Lower East Side, and they have opened a location on the third floor of this building, which is actually just above the hole where we just were. And the space is cozy, but it's beautiful. I love the exposed brick wall, and I really love these works by Andrea Forci even more. Andrea is um, a younger, more emerging artist. She's New York based, and these works are very pop art esque. They're portraits of a lot of different artists, a lot of French artists Charlotte Gainsbourg, Angelica Hudson, Charlotte Rampling. And there you have it. That's where we're gonna wrap up for today. And as always, let me know which ones were your favorite and stay tuned for next week. Oh my gosh, you are going to just, there are some amazing shows I can't wait to share with you. So make sure you subscribe so you get notified and you don't miss out on that. But I will see you next week. Bye.